I'm just going to go through um, our um, local plan in the NIU for a uh, contingency for an adult with, um, with EVD. Um, so um, Dr Igo has gone through this already, so I just, I suppose, highlighting the route to ID consultant in NIU and under the another healthcare facility is remote risk assessment or public health and just basically highlighting that all queries about uh, query uh, Ebola and high risk Ebola cases go directly to the ID consultant on call and there's a 24 ID consultant on call to, um, to tackle all these calls. I'm just going to briefly mention a case that we set up as a drill a number of weeks ago that worked quite well. Um, it's a, we got a, a phone call from an emergency in, from the emergency department about a 40-year-old nurse from Madrid. So, um, so she presented to the emergency department with a four-day history of fever, chills, muscle aches, and she was involved with caring for a patient with Ebola in the hospital that dealt with um, a case, of, a secondary case of Ebola, uh, recently in Madrid. So. Um, <laughs> So we just went through this just to highlight issues that we had uh, bringing a, a person from our own emergency department by ambulance um, to the NIU. So it was just it was a good uh, learning experience for us. So just going through the algorithm, and this has been touched on already. She was high risk. Um, she had, um, you know, she had a history of fever. She had suggestive symptoms. Um, and she was in an area that was affected by, I suppose, the current outbreak in Madrid. They've had three cases of Ebola over the last two months. Um, and again, going through the algorithm, you know, she was a healthcare worker, had direct contact, um, had, um, you know, had been identified as a contact of a probable confirmed case and had a close face-to-face -face contact. So the alert phase that happens in the NIU, there's a series of action cards, kind of like a cascade that goes from the ID consultant on call downwards. Um, so the call from the ED consultant came through, he rang the ID consultant on call. The ID consultant on call then rings the CEO who activates the internal communication cascade, goes through the switchboard operator, and then there is a series of uh, internal communication um, uh, procedures that, go, that they go through. And then um, the, the ID consultant also activates the senior nurse in the NIU. Uh, for example, Carla could be on and he basically um, tells her about it. She sets up the NIU and the second ID consultant who then tackles all the external communication issues with the HPSC, the ambulance, the Gardaí, public health and the and population health. So this is, this is, so this is how we, we are doing it at the moment. So the NIU is activated by the on-call ID consultant and the aim really is to facilitate a safe and efficient transfer of the patient. Um, so at the moment on our own website, um, uh, all staff members are, ava are aware of a readily available NIU policy and action cards and that we've been working on over the last few months. Um, and there's very clearly defined roles for all staff members um, from the ID consultant to the nursing staff to the CNMs to the patient flow, portering staff, security. So it's, it's really kind of foolproof uh, policy. Um, so basically, um, they're in our national isolation, you just to touch on what we actually have, we've two high specification negative pressure isolation rooms with HEPA filtration, separate air handling systems, and they're separated um, from the rest of the ward. And into, these, this, into this area in the NIU, there is an on-street entrance for an ambulance to arrive at Berkeley Road and then allow a patient directly into the National Isolation Unit. So the, I suppose, what, distinct from other isolation rooms around the country, there is a clean entrance room and an anti-room for decontamination. This is a, a picture of our anti-room, and I think earlier on it uh, was touched on the, the line, just kind of how we deal with kind of going from a, a dirty area to a clean area in the decontamination room. So there's a, st there's a unidirectional flow from the um, entrance room to the decontamination room uh, at all times. Um, the rooms are equipped with point of care testing. We went through them earlier on. Um, we're aiming to get a portable ultrasound uh, machine, and this is something that was highlighted as a, a necessity from the Hamburg case. Um, and we can, um, and the room itself, if needs be, can facilitate ICU equipment and dialysis. So the two rooms at the moment, they're, they're vacated and they're ready to receive a patient and we aim to have the patient, you know, we receive a patient within one hour and all 12 patients will be um, evacuated from other beds within the, within the ward within four hours. Um, at the moment, we're focusing on those two rooms. There's ongoing maintenance. There's, um, I, you know, with a negative pressure gauge, point of te care test equipment is being calibrated and, and being maintained at all times. It's fully stocked, and the, there's, the, the nurses have worked hard in maintaining the stock. They've identified what needs to go into the rooms, and they're maintaining a checklist um, of things that needs, you know, so that th there's no issue that we're ready to accept a patient, um, you know, in a matter of, I suppose, within one hour. 
So in terms of staff preparation, if in the event of a, in a suspected case, uh, we would have alerted the nursing staff, the ID consultant and registrar um, um, and the ICU consultants. Um, as you went through, it's always a buddy system of PPE donning, so that would obviously happen in the, in the, in the time just before receiving the patient. And there's going to be three staff members um, um, I w I prepared for the arrival of a patient. Um, so um, two nurses are assigned to the isolation room per shift and then we have other nurses that work as runners. So our idea is that, you know, um, initially there'd be a doctor who'd be in gear, there'd be two nurses and they'd be the receiving committee when, when, the, uh, when the ambulance arrives and they'd be the only three people in the area of the two kind of um, isolation rooms um, and you know, they'd, be, they'd be correctly um, in gear and everything. So. Um, so this, the idea of the unit, it's a closed unit, so all internal communication would go via the ID consultant or the CNM. All external communication, if there is a case, would go via the CEO or the ID consultant, and there's a press office as well that's been set up to deal with any national inquiries. Um, restriction would be um, very, would very be very heavily restricted as to who could enter or leave the um, the NIU. Um, it's going to be all non-essential staff, and there's going to be 24-hour security around the NIU at all times and on Berkeley Road, just to deal with the media because it's obviously going to be very high profile if it does happen. Um, and then in terms of public health concerns and containment, um, uh, there's going to be um, a log of all persons entering the room on the isolation facility and anyone who's been in contact. So if there is a, a concern about a secondary case, you know, after the person uh, is dealt with, um, you know, we, we, can, we can look, ba look back at that <coughs> log. So in terms of the transfer of the patient, there is an ambulance transfer is designated, is coordinated by uh, the HC ambulance crew, that's Lawrence McKenna and um, the Dublin Fire Brigade as well, and they have designated an ambulance and crew. The Gardaí are heavily involved and they're providing, and they provide an escort and they also are in charge of on-street precautions, just including, you know, kind of closing down Berkeley Road, guard escort if needs be. Um, and the ambulance um, and the Gardaí are, are in contact with the NIU to to tell us basically about the estimated time of arrival, assuming we probably need about 10 or 15 minutes at least just to get geared up and everything and just to prepare for the patient to have the door open and to make sure that it, the area where the patient is coming to is vacated of all, all other staff. So the transfer of the, of the patient goes directly to the, uh, the room, to the, sorry, to the uh, NIU um, via a door on Berkeley Road. Um, and then the patient is escorted by two members of the staff into the, into the isolation room. And we basically ensure that there's no, um, uh, that, that the ambulance staff don't contaminate by accident the route from the ambulance uh, to, the, to, to the isolation room. And we also assist the ambulance in dealing, in, in, moving the patient from the trolley to the bed and escort the ambulance crew back out to the, to, to the ambulance as well. So in terms of the initial patient assessment, um, there, there's going to be a nursing staff, two nursing staff and an ID doctor inside initially and we'll deal with the initial patient assessment. We'll probably go through the algorithm again um, and, uh, and assess the need for um, more um, IV access, bloods uh, and uh, stabilisation of the patient. Um, we're working on the premise that there'll be early ICU consultant involvement and Dr Marsh touched on this earlier on um, and if needs be early large for IV access and inside the room we'll have access to AB FBC clinical chemistry coagulation profile um, and then we've gone through what we need to do in the NIU to transfer a specimen from the NIU uh, under you know strict infection control precautions uh, in the category eight containers out to the NVRL and hopefully we'll get a turnaround in that sample within a matter of hours as well. Um, so in terms of training um, so we have engaged over the last number of weeks in intensive targeted staff training um, there's so basically, um, you know, in particular the PP body system donning and removal, and we we ask, you know, asking all staff who are going to be dealing with the patient to have done at least. A, there's going to be a minimum requirement for all the staff, and they're going to be required to maintain competency, you know, on a weekly basis thereafter. And point of care testing, and including using point of care. Um, with uh, PP gear is also underway and, and we're also working on what we should do with a deteriorating patient and also on waste management. So we've had two training scenarios to date 
um, that you know that you know kind of formalised um, drills that we've set up. Um, on the 24th of October, we had an ED activation where we moved a patient from our own ED facility, uh, for, from our own ED uh, internally to the NIU. On the 29th of October was our high-profile case where we had an external transfer by ambulance and Gardaí. Uh, admission to the INIU, we used the point of care testing equipment. We dealt with waste <coughs> management. We dealt with the issues of staffing rotation and also uh, with the amount of time someone can actually realistically stay in PPE gear because it really you are talking, as Prido was saying earlier on, about four to five minutes to an hour um, before it's, it's really kind of insufferable and you kind of have to work on the rotation system there. And we're also doing a debriefing um, session following all drills, both internal, our own internal debriefing session, and also external with the ambulance crew, the Gardaí, uh, and we're using kind of a root cause analysis format for that, just in terms of going back, identifying problems, going back and just uh, dealing with those problems, and maybe uh, we're thinking of doing another drill in coming weeks as well. Um, so in terms of maintaining competency, there's an EVD committee that meets every two weeks, um, and um, on this we have CEO, ma other uh, people in management, uh, medical staff, nursing staff, ICU staff, infection control, laboratory staff, waste management, technical staff, uh, uh, you know, anyone who's directly involved in, um, in, in a, who could potentially direct, be directly involved in a case and uh, we go through our drills as well and um, then there's also a weekly newsletter that's been sent out by the CEO office. Um, so that's just a brief run through of what, what happens at the NIU. I'm going to for an adult. Yeah.